statement. It's barely news. Yeah, it is barely news. And today, uh, the first thing we have, these are, if you don't know, there's a bunch of segments we go through that are typically not big enough to make the main list. We might talk about them for a little while. We might end up for 10 minutes on them because that's what we do here at the news. But uh, yeah, the first one we're going to show you is uh, the longest BVL BVLS flight on record. This is a T-Mobile ad, but it is true. And so we at least wanted to tell you about it, but it did make its barely news. They did a 77-mile BVLS flight with T-Mobile 5G, and this does count as far as I know as the longest BVLS flight by drone on record. Okay. Very exciting. That is yeah. a long damn flight. And uh, one worry, of the you things... cannot do that without a waiver. <laughs> right. One of the things we do in It's Barely News is highlight positive stories about drones. Here's one about a Portuguese drone that douses wildfires from above. Blunty, is it lifting up a fire hose? Shut up. Yeah, yeah. There's basically, they're using it as a sort of a remote firefighter. So instead of them walking out with the hoses and trying to douse these fires, they're having the drone do it. So, you know, it's just controlled so that it can deal with the, you know, with the hot air uh, coming up on it. And it's not going to mess it up flying. And then it can be where the, where the people can't and directly fight the fires a little easier. It occurs to me, Blunty, that if they were to shoot the water downward, it could help lift the drone. If they the, the, if they True. pressurize, obviously the line is pressurized. That They're... seems like a nightmare. You would need, what are you going to do, four pressurized nozzles and then have pig control yes! for the Yes, oh, nozzles? that's a great idea. You have four <laughs> pressurized nozzles and you adjust the thrust of the nozzles to fly the drone. That is a great idea. See, I hadn't even got there yet. <laughs> okay, fair, fair enough. <laughs> I was just thinking how hard the drone had to work to lift the line and the weight of the water. Nutty, Nutty Brewer says, is that legal? We can't fly near forest fires in Canada. Uh, yeah, there's tethering laws, but also if you're part of the government, typically you can get waivers to do this stuff. So. Yeah. Uh, we next? missed one, so if you want to go to the number oh, two Oh, shut there, up. How did I miss one? I was trying to Oh, man. <laughs> I did it again. I, I keep trying. skipping the one okay. you click on. I'm sorry, uh, Monty. There's a new drone delivery service, and this time it's launching in Norway. So as much as we complain about drone delivery, I don't know. Maybe there's some special issues in Norway <laughs> that this is this is dealing with. Maybe it's way harder to move stuff there because it's cold. Uh, you know, everything's frozen. Maybe, I don't know. You know, maybe there's reasons why this will work better there uh, than it works here. But currently, um, you know, at least in the U.S., we've seen a lot of these delivery services come and then, be propped up with a lot of money and then end up uh, failing or at least looking like they're going to fail. So, All right. Well, maybe this one won't fail. Yeah. We'll definitely follow up on that. We will follow up on that. <laughs> okay. The Mark, are we on the Mark Rober commencement cap now? We are. That's correct. The Mark Rober okay. uh, did a commencement speech. And uh, yeah, in that commencement speech at MIT, uh, he flew a drone uh, on his hat, <laughs> or not him. I imagine this was Nurk, but I don't know for sure who was there. Uh, he often uses Paul Nurkula as a, as a uh, drone pilot for his videos. Yeah. Interesting. Um, All you, right. Yeah, if you hop Oops. to, uh, let's see where it is. I thought I'd link it, but I didn't. Do the thing? Right at the end, 1835, 1840, somewhere right in there we can see it. Clearly this is just a normal cap. Okay, come on, Mark. Give it to us. <laughs> He's got the Insta360 on there. Uh-huh. Let's see. What do we got? There's DJI. That's a it's an original air unit. You can see the two antennas. Interesting. Look like hard to know what the motors are. Uh still have the do not pull on that brand new FN battery. Very cute. Oh, it's a little three cell. What is he flying? And we're out of here. Where's he going? All righty. <laughs> well, that's just silly. Yeah. Way to go. <coughs> it's cool to Mark see, uh, yeah, drones that more people get to see. So. Yeah. 
Next up, we talked about the Cyclorotor propellers from Cyclotech a while back. Um, and they have released some outdoor noise levels that may or may not mean anything. Uh, because it's a very specific test. And, you know, like, what does it actually mean? You know, and like, I don't know. So basically, at the very bottom here is the video. If you scroll up, like, two pictures from the bottom... We've got, uh, there you go, right there. You can see that's this the one. test setup they had. And I scroll down. Um, that's the test oh, setup they had where the rotor was in this setup. And then they had uh, microphones in front of it for acoustic mm -hmm. testing off of the cyclo rotor. Sure. So you can see, see the rotor at the top there. And this is how yeah. they're doing the testing. Um, so it's possible this works like it will in the, in the field, you know, but it sort of feels like a bench test versus a flight test for sound, right? Yeah. Yeah. And and these thing these rotors we've covered previously they're very interesting because they can vector their thrust without actually changing their their spin actually. It just changes where how the little veins are oriented as they spin. Uh but right. it allows them to change their thrust uh while spinning essentially at constant RPM. Is that right? I think it's yeah. constant RPM. Uh, uh they can't yeah well they can do that i'm not sure if that's the goal or not but yeah the, oh, okay. basically the idea is that they can use those veins to to yeah. change the function of the cyclorotors so yeah um and they're 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 saying the sound pressure at least in that bench test uh, essentially is only 59 dba at 300 feet which that's... is a conversation between two people yeah well at 300 feet 300 feet is fairly far but still that's pretty right. quiet I yeah. wonder I mean, what this, uh, are, our our drones are. Yeah, presumably that's. Uh, I mean, for the size of the drone, it's very quiet. Right, and I think yeah. that's the benefit. Yeah, pretty impressive. Let me watch this thing take off. Can we hear it? Hard to judge. Sounds, sounds pretty quiet. They're certainly aiming for that because they definitely want yeah. to provide this as an option for low noise. So Yeah, don't stick your hand in those cheese graters, though. And just to be oh. clear, people are asking, what is the point of these? The goal of these is to be an air taxi. So they're in the air taxi game, the advanced air mobility. Um, and their goal is to have these uh, to be a nice, quiet ride, and they can fly them over cities and, you know, those sorts of things. Yeah. So. Uh, Mad Max wonders if it, if less noise means more efficiency. I think there's probably some truth to that because any energy that is spent making sound is wasted and is not translated. I mean, conservation of energy, right? Um, so any energy you spend making sound is not spent making thrust. And so a quieter motor, all else being equal, should be more efficient. However, all else is often not equal. Also, also something that came up a lot in the toroidal talk was uh, you can change the like the frequency that you're hearing it at so you'll perceive it differently because of that so you make it the same loudness but if you can shift the frequency it could even be louder and be less annoying to the public yeah oh captain kazi good to see you here i was just looking at your t-shirts in fact i think i bought a couple of captain kazi's t-shirts uh captain kazi makes great t-shirts well shit uh can I find him that way? Captain Kazi. That's his YouTube. Where's his t-shirts? There we go. I uh, just happened to see Captain Kazi in the uh, chat and, you know, just squirrel. Makes really cool drone t-shirts. CaptainKazi.com. No sponsorship. Just I think his shirts are awesome. Good amendment rampage. And, uh, yeah. A little shout out there for, for you, Captain Kazi. <laughs> Boring. <laughs> Thanks. Um, go ahead, Monty. All right. Our next story is uh, cave paintings have been discovered with drones. Now, when I say that, what do you think I'm saying? Because I thought mm. it was something different. So well, basically... flew yeah. the drone and they found the cave paintings? That's correct. They didn't find paintings with drones in them. Oh, yeah, no. I just want to be clear about that. When I first saw it, I was like, what is this crazy story? But then I found out they flew drones up and they found cave paintings they weren't able to easily access and photograph with those drones, which of course seems obvious, but uh, it's pretty cool to see some documentation of that. Nice. Yeah. Good, good. Uh, we got what? Uh, one more. The flying saucer drone. 
Yeah, and last up, there's a flying saucer drone uh, you can ride in. This is the first one I've seen <laughs> at least manufactured. Uh, that seems like uh, an actual flying saucer. I'm sure a lot of people will be confused about what this is, especially if they slap LEDs all over. I mean, it's just a multi-rotor with a flying saucer shell, but it'll look Correct. really badass while it's flying. There's no doubt. Very true. Yeah. Can we see it fly? We got video. Show me the money. Oh, my God. No resolution. Oh, my God. No throughput either. <laughs> Don't look too stable, does it? Oh, it doesn't look stable no. at all. It does not look stable. This is not what I... Oh, my God. That, oh, wow. This is way sketchier than I thought it would be. Like, I really don't like it to see it wobbling like that. Yeah. I've seen little quads wobble like that and lose their shit. So, 